Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the 16th in the video tutorial series on Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind instruments. In this video, I'm going to talk about an overlay to all the optimizer strategies called multi-start optimization. It's a feature that you may use rarely, um, but first let me tell you a little bit about how optimizers work. Uh, I like to think of, of them as trying to find the solution to uh, an n-dimensional topographic problem. That is, each dimension is, is the variables that are uh, being manipulated, the whole size, the whole position. Um, the bore length and so forth um, in the optimization and the surface of this topographic map um, measures how far off the tuning is from what was desired and what the optimizer is doing is trying to find the lowest point on that map. Uh, it might be a very simple map and very easy to find that lowest point or it may be a very complex map with lots of low points that are almost all the same depth. Um, think of it as a number of mountain ranges with valleys in between the mountain ranges. Each mountain range has various canyons and this low point on the map can be in a valley. It can be up one of these canyons. It may be over two mountain ranges and so not only do you have to get very close uh, to find that lowest hole, you have to approach it from the right direction. So that's what multi-start optimization tries to do. It gives you various points where it starts the optimization to find that lowest point. And so I'll discuss how do you know if you have to use it and then um, a couple of scenarios on actually using it. So let's bring up the program and let's bring up the problem we had in the last tutorial which was a one inch uh, bore instrument and this time we'll, we'll keep it a square square ended bore, we won't make it hemispherical um, and we'll make the top of the bore even with the, the top of the TSH. And this says we ought to be able to make a D-sharp flute out of it, so let's open a D-sharp tuning file. And as in our last tutorial, let's make it a little easy. Let's uh, take out the really hard notes that um, minor, minor ninth in both fingerings. And first let's look at, at what its tuning is without changing anything. And we can see that it really was just created to be a pentatonic minor scale. So the notes in that pentatonic minor scale are in tune exactly in tune for the first octave and no attempt was made to get the tuning right for the second octave notes um, or for the cross-fingered uh, chromatic notes. So let's see if we can remedy that situation. And um, as before this was a grouped whole um, solution uh, was a starter anyway where where the the holes for each hand are equally spaced so let's use that as our solution strategy and let's put a taper in it so single taper grouped hole is the one that's indicated and let's just use the default constraints which is one and a quarter spacing for each of the whole groups. It's going to be pretty tight. This is going to be a hard flute to make um, with that kind of spacing and being a D-sharp flute. 
and we're leaving all the other parameters wide open, including bore length, hole size, um, and the taper parameters are, are wide open too. And let's do an optimization. So there's 14 optimization variables, so that my n-dimensional surface is 14 dimensions. And as before, these kinds of optimizations for a single run take 20 to 30 seconds on a laptop like mine, and it took 20 seconds. And our, our deviation measured in cents squared summed up over these 13 notes is fairly small. The tuning, um, that's a pretty good tuning. I, mean, I, I would go with that flute depending on what the bore uh, looks like. So let's see what that bore shape is. And the bore shape is blowing it up so we can see what the taper looks like. The taper, it's bigger at the top. It starts at about three and a half inches and ends just a, above hole one uh, at 10 inches. That's really a pretty acceptable um, bore geometry in my experience. I would probably stop right there and say, let's, let's make that flute. I would only have to angle the second hole down to get these two notes in tune. All the rest are in tune as, as they stand. Um, but let's, as the topic indicates, let's see if we can find a better solution. So from day one, we've had this multi-start optimization category that has three choices. No multi-start, uh, which says run the optimizer once, and we can see it was just run once. Um, and then we have two choices for multi-start. Vary all the dimensions or vary the first bound variable. So let's look at what th this last one is. First bound variable. So let's open up the constraints. The first variable is the one at the top of this list, which is bore length. So you might use this multi-start optimization, which will vary um, the first bound variable, the bore length, between your upper and lower bound. In this case, it's seven and a half to twenty-seven and a half, and um, it will take slices in here. In fact, it takes thirty slices. Um, equally and then does a run starting with a flute with that bore length. So it'll start with a flute with a seven and a half inch uh, bore and then a 7.8 and so forth um, or whatever it is divided by 30 uh, to go up. Now you might want to use that if your starter flute is dramatically different in length than the flute that you expect to get um, when, when you're finally done. So you use an E4 flute to make an E5, uh, an E3 flute, um, because you don't have an E3 starter and you just change the bore diameter to, to match what you think that, that E3 flute is you might find that you get a really silly result, and so then you would choose this choice. Um, but for the taper optimization, um, you would choose vary all dimensions. So what it's going to do is it's going to make a grid of, of options, changing all of these options, all of these parameters between the lower bound and the upper bound, and doing a run with each one. Um, so the first thing I would do, so it's not wasting its time um, looking at values that are not going to turn out, is this flute was 16 and a half inches, about the final. So let's only look at bore lengths that are around 16 and a half. So let's start from 15, so we won't accept a flute that's shorter than 15 inches, and um, longer than 18 inches. 
any of our solutions should be within that. And that's the only one I'm going to play with. I'm going to then vary all dimensions and choose the same starter flute that I started with before. I don't have to change anything else um, here. Uh, this is just how, how the optimizer is fired off. And let's fire it off and then I'll talk while it's running because it'll take a while. So first thing to, to notice is that there's a thing called an evaluator in the program and it's something that calculates how far off you are from the, the value you want. Um, for these multi-start evaluations, I use a different va evaluator than the final value evaluator just because it's much faster. It's about five to ten times faster than the one we'll ultimately use, which just looks at how many cents deviation there are between all the notes. So you can see it's doing runs, um, and it'll do 30 of them. For each run, it tells you what parameters it's using for the starting flute, and each one of these parameters is each one of these variables in order um, in, in meters, not in the unit of measure you might have here. And it's showing what its final optimum, what its deviation is. Again, this is not in cents for the, the reflectance evaluator. Um, but you can see if you, you look quickly that the optimum for each one of these runs is different. Um, I'll bring it up when it's done and you'll see that there's not going to be 30 different values for that. There's going to be groups. In fact, there's a small, well, there, there's a discrete number of low points in that topographic map. And it's going to find um, maybe all of them. But it's going to tell me which one is the lowest. And so there it told me the best optimum was that. Then it's going to, using the scent deviation evaluator, do another run with that starting value um, as the solution. Now, it, it got done. It had a final error in, in scent squared of 94. If we go back up to the original run, which was only a single run, it was 122. So we definitely found a better solution. Is it a solution we like? Well, let's look. What do we see? We see that it has a taper as well. It's a shorter taper, and it's between hole 3 and hole 4. Um, that shortness of the taper might concern me. I like to have my tapers be about three inches, but I don't know that this would cause turbulence. Um, how much better is the result? Let's see. So 2.7 cents average deviation compared to 3.07 cents average deviation. This is pretty typical. The, the single run will almost always find a reasonable result and the multi-start will always find at least or better a result. Um, it might not be one you use. You might li not like that shorter, shorter taper compared to the larger taper that we had with the single run. Um, but it's something to investigate. So um, the two times that w you would use this are one, you want to investigate other solutions. And sometimes it, it comes up with very interesting solutions. Um, again, you might not, not want to use them, but it might come up with, with very interesting solutions. Um, so you would use it in that scenario where you're, you're just exploring, or you would use it in the scenario where you say, you know, that's not a very good solution. Can I do better? And then you would use the multi-start. 
um, I said I would show you um, the discrete value so let's pop up this log so you can see you can undock the console window and you can resize it so that now we can look down this list of optimum values this is the result of the optimization um, it said the best result was 0.00103 uh, it found that on the first optimization run and that was the only um, nope I found it here too but if you look there's discrete values that are repeated um, so there's probably only about uh, 10, 10 different low points in this run and it's finding them all here um, but choosing the lowest one to uh, to do the more the final accurate calculation based upon sense deviation uh, my strategy is typically not to run this or run this look at the the value and then go back to the um, the constraints and then play with the constraints so I might say that I'm really more comfortable with um, so some of the some of the solutions you might get are smaller at the top than at the bottom you might say I want to reject those and so you would make the lower bound for the bore diameter ratio top to bottom uh, 1 instead of 0.8 so now it's always going to be bigger or uh, straight bore at the top I might say that the taper length um, so the way this is measured the metric is the fraction of the flute from where the taper starts to the end of the flute um, I I might say that I want that to be at least 0.3 and I would change that to 0.3 now if I do that and do that same run with the multi start so this is what I got without making those changes let's do the multi start again and this will be the last one I do and it's not going to scroll because I changed the position of the scroll bar so um, you're going to have to listen to me tell tell jokes or something in the in the, the about two minutes that it takes to to run this optimization um, what I typically find when I do this kind of run is that I end up with something that I like by changing the the variables in the the, the constraints a lower and upper bound with what I got when I did the single um, run optimization anyway uh, but I often get some very interesting um, bore profiles by running the multi start and you will come across scenarios where it is it's so hard to find an optimum that the the topographic map is very rough and uh, it may not get to to the best hole in in this this topographic map um, without some help there are optimizers that do this this surface search uh, automatically uh, they're also so slow that in general you don't want to use them so we have put some constraints in there and what did we end up with we ended up with a flute um, that looks pretty good it, now it has a longer taper and its tuning is halfway in between the 3.07 that we had with a single run and the 2.7 that we had with our best optimization run but a really very short uh, taper so uh, 
you might end up doing a couple of multi-start runs, uh, playing with the uh, with the constraint uh, boundaries, uh, but ultimately it's going to take a lot less time to do this than to to make some firewood. So enjoy playing with with uh, the optimizer. It really comes up with some very interesting solutions. And have a good day. Oh, before I go, let me, as usual, uh, show you the URLs um, that might be useful. Um, the release page is is this URL. Um, if you have issues, um, want to see what other issues other users have had. Um, want some help on a particular problem, uh, post an issue on this page. Um, the full list of tutorials, and we're up to 16 now, um, can be found on this page. And the written documentation is on um, this final page. So until the next tutorial, I hope this really is the final one, but until the next tutorial, have a good day.